everybody. Happy holidays. We're just about, you know, almost almost Christmas time. So we're so glad you're able to join us today. And as always, we love to thank the Washoe County Libraries for helping us host our High Noon series. It's really made such a difference uh, getting our programs out live and then um, the archives as well. So we've had great turnout and, and people just love watching the videos and as always thanking Carol and Sam Coleman when they've helped us with editing and so they've been a great backup for us in the library um, helping making our programming available. Well today we're very excited to have our host also be our speaker for a high noon shootout with Neil Cobb. Neil is a wonderful storyteller um, as well as has amazing photos and as you may or may not know you know he's written a couple books with Jerry Fenwick, Reno Then and Now and so he, he he's He's just such a great guy and we just love him. And, and he is what we consider our honorary curator. And he's done wonderful talks around Reno and helped support the Historic Society. So we really appreciate Neil and his years of support with us. So Neil has a great program today. It's about Reno, uh, living here in the Reno in, during the 1950s and 60s. And so he's gonna show us some amazing photos as well as tell us some great stories. So without further ado, let me introduce Neil. Thanks, Neil. Well, I'm flattered. <laughs> Jerry, thank you so very, very much. It is just a, a major treat working with the Historical Society and you in particular. This program that I put together, and I always have to name my program, so I had fun with this, so I probably should explain it. It's up. Apollo Productions. And we built Caney B. Zantana up on Red Peak. And I'm at the 70 foot level. Uh, we guide, and that's to go ahead and tie the antenna down every 30 feet. I made it to 70 feet and I wouldn't go any further because the whole thing was catching the wind up there and the rest of it. And I cost my dad a pretty penny because he had to bring in the experts, the high flyers from uh, Texas for Ronan Tanis. But I tried to pass this picture off at the DMV instead of them taking the regular picture because it's the best photograph I've ever had taken of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the program with a bang. Okay. And you can't do it any more <laughs> effectively than an atomic explosion. Washoe Medical Center. It has grown big time, changed names and so on. I was born there in 1939. You get to the main streets of town, Welch's Bakery. And we got the Little Waldorf and the Reno Hotel above it. Welch's Bakery was a lot of fun because they used to make a uh, sweet French bread and they had uh, stacked ventilators up on the roof and they could aim these things down Virginia Street and it looked like the Pied Piper of consumers uh, going up to Welch's to get the fresh bread. Fun little things like this happened all the time. They were downtown, City Hall, we had uh, Sierra Pacific Power located down there. City Hall, front shot. Little action. This is 1964. And this is a who's who of who, who's in the car. Number one, he's the most important guy there. But you've got Governor Sawyer, you've got Walter Baring, and you've got Alan Bible and President Lyndon Baines Johnson. The most important guy is the one in the car. That's Jack Dempsey. This photograph was taken by Don Don Darrow. Now I've incorporated shots of his and George Kerr's in this program because who else could have gotten the shot besides them? The Liberty Bell. Now we talk about great prime rib, and there's a lot of fine eating establishments in Reno, and there always has been. And all of the places had real good prime rib. 
but only two places in the entire area had perfect prime rib. One of them was 10 miles out of town to the west. That was the Bird Eye Inn. And of course, the Liberty Bell. We got recipients of the first Silver Spurs Award. In fact, you better recognize this guy. There's John Wayne and John Ford up there. This is taken out on South Virginia Street. And you can just see the corner of Landron's Cafe with it says chili. And this other one is the circus potato chips that's now a uh, tailor shop. And it was a lot of fun when we were kids because we could go in there and they'd give us a sample bag and a little brown bag of the potato chips. Then we'd hike on down to Shoshone Coca-Cola and stand out in front and we'd finally get a Coke. But it was really comical because by the time we got there, the grease spots coming through the brown paper was, were uh, covering the entire bag. This is a whole list of the recipients and there's quite a who's who on there. You got John Wayne, Gregory Peck, James Stewart, Kerry uh, uh, Cooper, uh, Alan Ladd, Spencer Tracy, and again, uh, James Stewart, and my favorite, Glenn Ford. He got there twice and Fred McMurray is in this stagecoach out at the Reno Rodeo grounds. This would be the bend going from you know, Wells Avenue to Audi Boulevard. This was the townhouse, one of the better eating establishments in, on First Street in downtown Reno, right across the street from the Granada Theater. I mentioned Shoshone before, they were out there. We used to be able to get our uh, way into the rodeo by taking an empty case, uh, one of those wooden cases and collect enough bottles to earn our, our admission to the rodeo. And there was other incentives out there too, but nothing uh, any more effective than the uh, Black Mariah. Uh, that's where you loaded up the people and took them to the Hooskal that was down in the corner of 2nd and Virginia Street because they weren't dressed in Western attire. Cost them a buck for a garter and it also got a free admission to the rodeo for them. So it was all fun. This is just a, a typical shot with an, one of the gas stations. This is California Avenue and South Virginia Street. The building right here on the side is the Lake Mansion in its original uh, location. But it was common for the people that had side yards that uh, bordered a corner because that was a, a, a very advantageous spot or a gas station. So it was lucrative for them to go ahead and lease the property. And this is what they had done with the lake, whoever owned the lake mansion at the time. This is our state building, the front entrance. You can see the sign over here, that's the you know, Chamber of Commerce. And of course, that was the second location uh, for the Nevada Historical Society. And again, <laughs> uh, the two-headed calf that was very popular then and it still is now. If you go to the other side, and this is a, a rodeo parade, you're going to see the entrance to the Washoe County Library. And above uh, would be the auditorium. It was a, a T-shaped structure, the state building was, with a major front, and then this goes back to Center Street. On the stage, this is Nixon in 1952 campaigning. He was the running mate for Eisenhower, and that's his wife, Pat. Next photo, it shows a close-up of Pat, but we've got a fellow we're gonna talk about again uh, a little later, his name is uh, William Raggio. Right down Douglas Alley. This is typical looking uh, action during the uh, 50s and 60s. The wine house was a wonderful place to go in and have spaghetti. And it was amazing because the floors had all kinds of debris on them and you had the cook out there in the middle of things with his towel over his uh, shoulder and so on and all of these beautiful, beautiful oil paintings. And it just didn't, they didn't go together at all. 
Uh, but by God, they had the best spaghetti in town. You also had the Sierra Turf Club there, and they had a little bit of a deli up front on that one, and you could actually buy the pickles, the whole pickles out of the barrel there. Uh, we used to hike over from Central Junior High and uh, be able to get one of those on lunch hour. We got a little action going here on the front of Harold's Club. It says, watch for our new front. And this is what they came up with. Now, Harold's Club, you see Harold's Club or bust up at the top there. Well, Don Dondero and George Kerr decided that they, they could have some fun. And they uh, talked to a gal that was part of the review at the Riverside. And about three o'clock in the morning had her pose uh, out uh, on the north side of the railroad tra tracks with the Reno Arch in the background and Harold's Club and so on. And they got in big trouble when they tried to pass this off to the Smith family because they were told in no uncertain terms, you get rid of every one of them damnable cards. And so they had a little play on the um, Reno or bust. And so we'll, a quick shot here. Uh, this is what they took and this is what got them in trouble. Up Sierra Street, the original location for the Reno Little Theater and dead across, look at all the houses and stuff in the background. Reno was growing, but not like it's growing now. Not by leaps and bounds, a little bit at a time. Across the street was Duprat's Market. Let's go up to Mount Rose. This is the Reno Ski Bowl, the bottom of the rope toe. Look at the old equipment that's down there. You notice the long skis. Those are the old north ones with that little tip on the front and the things were about eight foot long. No steel bindings and leather straps uh, for the, uh, for no steel edges, pardon me, and uh, leather straps and stuff for the bindings. This would be a collegiate competition hosted by the University of Nevada. This is up on Mount Rose. And as you come down Mount Rose, there was a wonderful place to eat. It was called the Christmas tree. And when I did this program for God Club here a couple of weeks ago, only person in the entire audience that knew what the dog's name was uh, was Ben Scott's wife, Sandy, and his name was Clancy. Go a little further down. In fact, this would be about 2.8 miles up from uh, 395 or the South Virginia or South Virginia Street. It's the inside of the Lancer. Originally, there was the Mesa. They had a couple of two, three fires, and each time they had a fire there, they would add on a bit and so on until they finally sold it and to the people that renamed it and added on a little bit more. But in 1971, it burned to the ground and now you'd never know that there was a restaurant up there. This one is 1954. This is uh, First and Virginia Street. And the reason I like this photograph is I had a call from Farron Zoni over at this Sands. And he says, uh, Mr. Cobby said, I've been told that you have a photograph of the Mapes Hotel and, and the little marquee out in front. And I says, yeah. And he says, well, my parents were, the, were a dance team. And if you see right here, it's the Zonies. And so I made him a copy of it when working over at George Kerr's studio with him, his dark room and all. I took it over and you had to think I gave the man a new Ferrari, but he was so pleased. Mapes at night. And we got a real nice aerial of the Mapes and you can just kind of look around on there and see multiple things. Of course, again, the front of the city hall, and it's got a rather grand entrance. And there was another one on the side uh, that went over to uh, Center Street that was not quite as grand, but it, it, it was very nice. One thing you really wanna look at 
is right here where the configurations of the double arch on both the Virginia Street Bridge and the Center Street Bridge formed this bit of an island. And it was in the uh, early 60s, late 50s, that a used car salesman homesteaded the island. And, and everybody was all concerned. He said, well, what are we going to do about that? He says, we're going to wait for high water and he'll be gone. And that's exactly what happened. But before it ever looked like this, the WBA and the CCC got together and they enhanced this natural formation of this island. And it looked like this. You'll see a tufa rock fountain here, a serpentine path going from Virginia Street over to Center Street and all of those beautiful flowers. And what they had done is they built up the sides with all of these boulders and so on. And of course the floods really uh, took care of a bunch of uh, the improvements that they'd made on the river. So the money tree, that's pretty much uh, the kiss of death for the Mapes uh, uh, in empire. Another great facade was the a palace club, and I always thought this was a lot like the the old western towns with that great big old front pony facade that they had there, or saloon or whatever, because that's pretty much what you had as far as the palace club. But they had a great, great uh, a sign out front, didn't they? This is uh, Manzanita Lake, Manzanita Hall. My mom had taken this uh, photo in '46. Uh, but it's still a beautiful uh, building and it's still there. And in the book, we uh, ran a comparison uh, how it looked now and then. But uh, I had got a hold of this. It was a four by five color transparency. And at the time, we didn't have all of this digital stuff where you can really convert from uh, co color slides to uh, hard copy. Uh, but um, I was able to hire this one guy, the, uh, Van Lanningham, and he was able to uh, convert it around. I think it cost me $40, $50 to do that. Now I can do it for, for uh, turning on my uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop, do it myself. Crescent Creamery, that structure is still there. If you're approaching the overpass there on Wells Avenue, and just look over to your left, you'll see that same building. This is Model Dairy, and this is Peckham Lane down here. And you got the airport over here. There's the airport again. In 1958 and 59, it changed drastically, getting preparing for the 1960 Olympics. And all of those buildings were uh, <laughs> relegated to <clears throat> uh, storage for construction equipment while they built the new airport building. So look at the propeller aircraft and stuff down there, no jets. The Riverside Hotel with that addition, that was a Priceline addition that they put on. They were able to save the Riverside and, and it did a beautiful job and so we can still enjoy it. In fact, we thought that would be the one that would be in peril and the MAPES was an easy save. We had it wrong because we no longer have a MAPES. But there's a couple of things that happened down here at the Riverside. Uh, that was the uh, United Airlines on the side of Virginia Street. And that's where you go in and to get your tickets and head out to the airport. And you know, they also had a swimming pool. <clears throat> My dad put k and &E on the air and, they, and he would always get me to cover the board while he went out and interviewed celebrities or, or covered the air races or, or anything like that. And Dennis Day was uh, uh, putting on a little promotional and he had a wheelbarrow full of silver dollars. And the starlets were supposed to come out from the review that they had going there. And as he threw silver dollars into the swimming pool, they would die for him like the natives did on some of the cruise ships and stuff uh, when they pull up close to port. 
Well, they didn't show and they didn't show and they didn't show. And 20 minutes later when they did, he says, well, I've waited long enough. And he took the wheelbarrow and he ran it right off, dropped it into the pool and put a pretty good little crack in the bottom of it. And my dad was still laughing when he when he relieved me from there. He, he couldn't keep a straight face. He said, it was just belly, belly roll laughs. That's what, and that wasn't him. He was always pretty reserved. But that was a funny scene. And again, it would only happen in Reno. Reno Hot Springs. You can see Geiger Grade in the distance. Now, Reno Hot Springs was just off the south uh, west corner of the of the um, Mount Rose Highway and and uh, three and ninety five. Out Highway Forty, we had Lawtons. In town, we had Idlewild, and this is a group of us when we put on an aquacade in. 1954, Fritz Hurt Line and uh, a whole bunch of other people, Ed Colonel's there, and Dale Jensen, who uh, uh, there's a great story about him. This is him right here. Uh, he was the guy that uh, blew up the microwave stations after they uh, ran him off his gold mine. He got even with them pretty good. You want to look that one up because it's a great story. This would be out, this is Highway 40, right over here. This is the ore ditch up on the top here. And this is Tahoe Timber and a whole lot of action there. I worked one summer pulling green chain and I was really, really buffed by the end of that summer. That is a tough job with those. Olden Cycle Ray, this was down on Forest Street and Lake. And here they had the new motorcycles and the bicycles. They carried Schwinn and they carried Indian and Harley Davidson both. And they also had the Cushman motor scooters. Another shot with their sign hanging out in front and then you're looking all the way down to the east. And you can see the, the old Moore's Hotel and so on. But uh, Nola Hart Troutman was Bud Oden's sister. And she says, well, I was the important one there. He said, I did all of the paychecks and I cut the, dealt with the uh, tax people and all of the rest of it. And I ordered new equipment and I did this and that and the other thing. And then after I was done being important, I grabbed the Windex and uh, the towels and I went out in front and cleaned off all of the nose prints and fingerprints from the kids from Northside Junior High, which was directly across the street. This one's BD Billinghurst. That Northside was built in 1924. This one, uh, the Billinghurst was 1931. Now it's soccer fields uh, right out there on, on the corner of Plumas and Walker. Reno High School, this was a product uh, coming out of the 1910 bond issue. It was completed in 1912. And it's uh, <laughs> uh, it been replaced big time. The Sundowner occupied the spot for the longest time after they tore it all down. Like this, this is just a side shot of the uh, on uh, Sierra Street, the Emporium of Music and stuff. And then this is the, over here is the side of the um, uh, of the wigwam coffee shop. But I like this keep them flying business on there because right on the sidewalk, there was a, 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 a double set of steel doors. And if you could get one of them open, you could reach down and hit the button and this curved uh, top of it would actually move both of the doors open so we could go ahead and get in the elevator, go down and go across the storerooms and stuff and come out by the restrooms in the Nevada theater, which later would be the Crest Theater. And that's just uh, how the kids got into different uh, movie houses. We had a way to get into all of them. This is the front of it with the Nevada theater. And you want to notice this sign right here, 
This is not recommended by Duncan Hines. Now, Les LaRue, he was a character and a half. He had a bank of four slot machines inside the front lobby area there. And they had a sign hanging down and said, they, these machines pay more for less L-E-S than any other machines in town. His calling car read like this. He said, when the white man came to this country, the Indians were running it. And he said, there were no taxes and the women did all of the work. And of course, the white man figured he could improve on a system like that. Cards like that were common. People made fun of themselves. I remember one of them with a, a, a little Jewish fellow. He's got his ear to the ground, listen, uh, listening for the best deal for you. The Italian guy had his nose to a, a grinding wheel. And he says, we're, we're, we're working hard, uh, uh, grinding away to make the best deal for you. And they, they, they had fun with it. And they weren't offensive. They were just a matter of, well, they were part of the, the, the uh, melting pot and we all loved it, every one of them. They were great. I, would, I, I uh, was um, raised up in the second Italian neighborhood and uh, all of my friends and stuff, they had these great names. I come home one day from Mary S. Doton and I asked my mom, I says, hey, how come we got this silly name, this, this, just four letters on there, this cob, and we got the Bernelli's and the Aventinos and they got all of this. And she looked at me and she said, Neely says, that's because you're not Italian. I said, I'm not. I was the last one to know. These, this was the best place in the world to grow up. Those houses up there, they, every one of them, the fronts of them would qualify on the front of better homes and gardens. And the treasures were coming up the back alley. Those people could grow the best produce in the world. Absolutely wonderful. This is something that might have to be explained down there at 235 Ralston Street. They took all of the sawdust and stuff from Tahoe Timber and manufactured a whole bunch of other sawdust in their processing also. And they compressed them, they made presto logs. You'll see one of them here in the corner and they burned clean and they were sold in six packs. And look at the stack of these things. You, nobody's ever heard of modern day uh, presto logs, they just aren't. I like to slow down every so often and just show how beautiful our river is. Got the fish ladders up the side there, the falls in the side there, and just a nice, beautiful afternoon. Over on Sierra Street, we got the Parkway Hotel with a restaurant called the Moulin Rouge. I don't believe it lived up to its name. This one is a real nice because it shows here at, you've got the Tower Theater. We had the Majestic, the Tower, the Nevada, the, the, just on and on. Even before that, you had other theaters, the Roxy and the Hippodrome and so on. It was just, this is where we went. This is where the Saturday afternoons were uh, provided with your little box top from um, Old Home Dairy. Uh, you, part of the closing apparatus on the conversion from uh, glass to paper, wax paper, uh, was a corner little thing. And they had a, 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 a little red button that was pressed down in the closing apparatus. You get it out and that got you in the movies on Saturday morning. You had a double feature, two and three cartoons, a serial and the whole works. Started off at the Nevada Theater over there on Second Street and wound up at the T at the Tower. Everybody talks about it. So what a wonderful, what wonderful time the 1950s were. Well, there were some problems too. If you look at this sign right over here in the in the corner, it says polio insurance. And I had a friend that uh, was stricken with that, and he was crippled for the rest of his life. So we've had our problems right along. 
But Auto Rose over here, Nevada Auto Supply, you've got the Buick dealership, which was Scott Motors, and they also had the Cadillac and so on. And Johnson Chevrolet would be down the corner here. And this large building here was something we were all very, very proud of. Uh, that was our MAPES Hotel, which we don't have any longer. The power company had moved from First Street to here. You see the Ready Watt right there. Right up on the top here right now would be Rancho San Rafael. And we are very lucky to have that part. If it hadn't have been for a fellow by the name of Clark Santini, that was a major pain in everybody's neck. He just badgered it and badgered and in front of every kind of a body you could uh, find. He rallied the troops and so on, was able to keep commercialism um, uh, taking over the properties up there. This is an extension down below of the Costello's Ranch, which is now housing and right up the hill is housing also. It's beautiful houses, but we have got one of the finest parks uh, with that Rancho San Rafael you're gonna find any place. You go out South Virginia Street and right about here is where IGT would be. What was going on with this, this cut off on the side of the hill is that's where the police officers would go out and they would uh, be able to sight their weapons in and practice and, and uh, as far as their accuracy and so on. But they were pastures all, all over out South Virginia Street. It all looked like this. When Archie Crafts he shot, this is there in the 1950s. Uh, trying to show how pretty the um, center street was and, and fight it out with all of the real neon that was over there uh, on Virginia Street. But this is a great shot and we have enjoyed it and used it many times for other reasons. The Victory Coffee Shop would be directly across the street from Harold's Club. Uh, we had the victory cleaners, the victory theaters, the victory one thing or another all during World War II. It was, it was like the Olympics when we had the Olympics and we had all kinds of activity and everybody had their signs up promoting that too. But World War II was a, was a, a biggie here. We had the troops uh, with the trains that stopped and the Herald, Herald's Club and the rest of the clubs were able to get them to uh, stay just long enough so that they could be treated well. They hit the USO and the, and the clubs and the, uh, geez, they, they fed them at all the different places. It was, it was uh, really trying to uh, you know, support your troops because we knew where they were headed. They were headed to San Francisco and the Pacific Theater. Looking down Sierra Street, 1957, this would be a Don Darrow shot. This was February when the gas explosion in the tunnels that blew up, seven people were killed in that. You had the uh, all of the downtown stores, home furniture was way down here in the National Dollar Store. Uh, you had uh, Montgomery Wards and Sears. And here, well, we lost the oldest building in town. Uh, that was the 1872 uh, Masonic Temple. Uh, this is when it was, the bottom floor was uh, Reno Mercantile. But this was a great shot it, that uh, Don had taken. And he became a pretty famous uh, photographer because he was hired by the insurance people to go down and actually take pictures in the tunnels uh, where the gas had collected. And when it was ignited, it really blew the heck out of everything. But he was down there with his, the old time flash units and the rest of it when nobody else would, would, would go down. And he got the pictures that nobody else uh, was gonna bother with because it was too damn dangerous. So, this is our Photoshop. And uh, downtown businesses, you, you notice it's pretty narrow. Uh, if you had a 35 foot frontage, you had a pretty big shop. This one's only 25 feet across there. And we had the retail stuff 
uh, out front. And of course, the office was up above. In the back part, through the curtains, we had the studio. Then it got into an area where you loaded your film packs and then the dark room. And then out the back door, uh, you could look down uh, through the skylight into the uh, printing press of the Reno Gazette and, and the journal. This, photo, this painting that's up here is of Reno Brown and her, and her horse. She was a, a movie star uh, married to a fellow by the name of Lash LaRue, who was also a movie star. And my mom painted this and she used, instead of a frame, she used this rope that's around it. So we had a full basement with a copying machines and all of that stuff. Uh, but uh, they were small frontage and small, uh, everything packed in there. I'll show you a, a, a drugstore just a little later and you'll see how packed you can really get a small uh, piece of property that was downtown Reno. This one is my dad and another fella and this is in the original Roaring Camp. And it was fun because you see the guns and that on the back. Those are the ones that were originally owned by Tom Mix, another uh, early uh, Western movie star. And then it wound up with uh, um, Raymond Stagg uh, buying all of the stuff after Mix was killed. Well, they wound up at Harold's Club, of course. And that was the, the beginning of that whole thing where they expanded upon and had the world's largest uh, gun collection there for a while. But this is my dad and they were sitting on these saddle seats. And you'll notice there's a coin up mechanism right there. And the gag was to go ahead and just put a coin in and, and, and watch the drunk try and maneuver uh, while he's got his drink and uh, half schmacked. So, this is the corner you're looking to the north, east on 2nd and Center Street. You see the Mezpa Hotel, terrible fire there. Well, you had the uh, Parker's Western Wear, where they were the only place in town that had Levi's. So that was a big deal there and the bus depot up here. Later on, uh, other people were able to carry Levi's too. But the only competitor that they really had around was over at Sears and they had their own brand. And then of course, Wrangler and uh, Lee, they, they came out too. But that was a pretty busy corner. Now it's part of the, the Harris expansions. You take a look here, this is the, uh, it, it was officially was named the Lion build, Building, L-Y-O-N. Uh, but most of us call us the Oddfellow Building because that, that was the, the main occupant. And then you had the Reno Business College in there and all kinds of other uh, lawyers and doctors and stuff. So uh, periodically it was referred to as the professional building. But they had this fire in, in uh, 1945 and they lost the upper two stories of this building. Before I go to the next slide, I want you to make note of this establishment, you see it down in the lower corner, and it's not the Club Calneva like it is now, it was the Club Fortune, but it says this establishment is recommended by Duncan Hines. They didn't know as much as the real restaurant ears. <laughs> but this is the building the way it looks now. This is the front of modern photo. The other businesses, the, uh, you had Orchid uh, Florist and the Smith, and they, real nice fur coats and the rest of it. But th this is uh, uh, about 1953, four, right in there. Now we show you the over on Center Street, the Hotel Golden. You notice there's a beautiful fire escape down the front, uh, which they certainly could have used uh, April 3rd, uh, 1962. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute, but this building right here is the Don Darrow building. I keep talking about Don Don Darrow, but it, it wound up in the uh, 1890s, uh, the Don Darrow brothers selling nickel beer 
but then it, it, it was the Northern and the barn and the Bonanza and so on. But after the fire that took place, oh, wait a minute, I get ahead of myself here. I wanted to show you the second street and where Harris had come through already uh, from the Don Darrow building that went all the way across. They brought out David Jacobs uh, Clothier. You see the Grand Cafe and the Grand Barbershop and the Grand Hotel entrance and, and all of this, and a Hales drug right on the, on the corner. Well, the fire, we lost six, seven people there because they couldn't get out when they tried modernization and covered the whole front with this goofy louver system. People could not get out of that. It was a real disaster. You see the activity. They had aerial flights that came in and, and dropped and they, the, whole, the whole works. This was a mess. But you notice what I just showed you with the, uh, the um, Grand Cafe and all of that. Uh, that's all been uh, dug out and they're getting ready to expand it with Harris Club. Well, by the time the Tomlin brothers that owned the Golden at the time, and uh, they didn't have, I don't think they had any friends, but uh, Harris wound up, instead of bailing them out, they bought them out. And that's where they expanded. And the next shot shows that the Don Darrow building is sitting here all by its lonesome. And I, it wound up being leased and they tore it down. And I imagine that was a, I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall during those no negotiations because they had a key piece of property, almost like the Santa Fe and they had to build a bus station around them. <laughs> so. This is just down Ford Street off of Ralston. This is the Franson Hotel. And, and most of the, the people that lived in these apartments were school teachers, either over at Reno High or Central or down at Northside or whatever. I, I know that for a fact because I had a tutor to where I had a little trouble with uh, ink reading. So, but this Sierra Motel, is, that sign is still there. And here you have a little bit of a snowstorm. We had lots of those. This is Riverside Drive and First Street. Eugene's out South Virginia Street. Great dinner place. There's the inside of it. Betty Stoddard, KOL. K-A-T-O, later on it would be K-Bet. Betty Stoddard had the Be My Guest television uh, show on uh, KOL uh, television for many years. And she was a, a mover and a shaker as far as getting things sold. This is a uh, sports car club. This Jose Gastonaga and Billy Daniels and Joe Granada over here. This is out at Idlewild. And this is the first XKE that we saw in town, and that was Jose's, and that was 63. We've got the um, uh, night shot of uh, our Mancos and stationers and, and the Gensler Lee uh, jewelry shop. Here it is, same thing with the Waldorf here and Clay Peters building here. I told you about the drugstore, that would be this one right here. After it was Steele's, it was a, another Hales. And you see the inside of it. And you see if you can pack any more merchandise in there, I don't know where you would put it. Very seldom did you ever see the Reno Arch uh, hanging by a, a cable that they were uh, remodeling what was the California Club, which would wind up being the colony when they were all done. And they were also putting up the scaffolding on the picture I showed you earlier of Harold's Club with the new front. There's the, the colony. 
Later on, Harold's Club bought it out and it was the Harold's Club Arch Lounge. During the Olympics, a gentleman taking pictures to the front of, of Harris and they had all of the different flags for the different countries that were participating. This was the Sierra house out on Sierra Street. Now you'll find the Porsche, well, wound up being a Porsche building, but now it's a, 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 it's a bank building. And, and on the other side, right about in here would be the art museum. This is Plaza Street and you're looking straight down to uh, the army goods store that was Shemkowski's. And uh, we used to go over there on our lunch hours and stuff. And we buy patches and that from all of the different services and the uh, goofy hats and stuff. It was, it was a fun place to go shopping. These are the homeless uh, down along the river. We've always had that right behind uh, the desert class. It's a good thing for neon because the rest of it doesn't look all that great, does it? But that was your Nevada club. This is the Colonial Apartments on, down on West Street. And it's still there. Now a bit of humor. <laughs> this is uh, Harry Truman slip here. If you've got to look at the rest of it, uh, but not the right night. Everybody always made fun of the presidents. Doesn't make any difference which, whether it were R's or D's. Uh, somebody's got something to say. Now this one, I <laughs> took my friend Virgil Gibson out because he, he would fly down here and he went ahead and landed up instead. And I needed to go to the restroom and I went in where they had the, the Russian MiGs. And this is <laughs> what, what was there. And I went, I went down to see George and I told him what I'd seen up there. And he said, well, we've got to get a picture of that. So we charged out there and he got a picture of it. So I'm letting you enjoy it too. This is a fun shot taken by Bev Pomerol that uh, was assistance to George Kerr. And it's great because what this guy's painting right here is he's stamping and that says no jaywalking, no jaywalking, no jaywalking. And that lasted 24 hours when the club put, clubs put a stop to that. I talked about the uh, Reno Brown. Uh, her name was actually Ruth Brown. And that was the Circle RB Lodge. And that was of course named after her. Next door to it was the L Ruth, which is now the Tombstone uh, Motel. A little bit of modification. You take off the R here and the, the B part here and you've got the Chinese pagoda. Uh, now it's still a restaurant. Here we have the Harris Auto Collection. And when you have one model, if it came in multiple colors, he had all of the different colors, plus all of the diff different models. This is, uh, of course, Bill Hera, and this is Bob Ring, his right-hand man. The Dairy Queen, we're missing our Dairy Queen here in Reno. And I always stop when I do a live uh, program, I'll stop and I'll look at the audience. And I say, why, and why in the world would anybody have a picture like this in the middle of a historical presentation. Well, this is Don Don Darrow's humor again. I stole it directly from him because the answer is, it's my slideshow and I like the slide. This is how Arlington Bridge looked. None of the big buildings. We had this one in here because of this sign with the Gaylords. At God Club, we had Bert Minaldi. He was one half of the Gaylord and Holiday. And he sang for us, uh, uh, God bless America. And, and he would bring a bit of humor and the rest of it with it, just like they did in the shows that they'd put on. Uh, they had uh, national television. You know. 
that's why I always like to show this one because can you imagine a, if somebody out there with a Duesenberg now? Um, <laughs> this is when Harris was first moved. They lost their lease, their sublease from Harold's Club, and they took over the mint. And uh, they haven't got all of the sign up yet, but they will. This is the mint. That would be the same building, Nevada Club, and you've got the Reno Bingo and so on. This is the north. Uh, west corner of Second Virginia Street, and people were so happy when they Walgreens has been here now now about twenty years, uh, but they oh we, Walgreens is here now. Well, they gave up on Reno. Walgreens was here. This is in the late nineteen forties. Rizzoni's gas station. This is the corner of Fourth and North Virginia Street. This is where. Uh, for the two major highways, uh, your east-west with Highway 40 and 395 Virginia Street uh, crossed. And if you wanted to know where to find anything, uh, these uh, gas attendants knew exactly where uh, to tell you to go. And they were polite about it. No, that's that serious. This was just across the street. And he says, well, what's all that flood water doing there? Well, there was a cloud burst up on the the side of a pea vine and it came all the way down and uh, it went downhill. It came down uh, Virginia Street and Sierra Street and the rest of it. But that was what it looked like. The Al Tavern. It's showing you some of the motels. Ray's Drive-In, Don Sparks. This I, I talked about the uh, the other side of the city hall. Now it's a little bit out of the picture right here. I'm showing you the majestic theater in the back of the mapes, and this would be the sweet shop and so on. And this is one of the ways that we were able to sneak into the majestic. Oh, you see the fire. But my friend, uh, uh, well, both of them, George Kerr and Don Don Darrell were footprinters. And they went ahead and they put the footprinter marks here. And they had this bucket of whitewash. And they said, well, wait a minute. We could make pedestrian stripes going from here across from the outside exit. And the reason for that is because this was the Steinhoff bra that was directly across the street. And that's exactly where all of the real City of Reno business was conducted. You see the Reno Evening Gazette here in the Reno garage. This is the, the front lobby of the Majestic. This is the Crest Theater. It started off as the Wigwam Theater, then the Nevada, and then the Crest in 48. Well, there's their can candy counter there. This is the demolition of the Majestic Theater. Johnny's Little Italy is now out 4th Street to the west. Night shot of Harold's Club and the, uh, the, just the action. It was a busy place downtown Virginia Street was. This is the um, stockade. I won't explain that to you. But uh, I mentioned the one fellow, Bill Raggio. Well, this fellow here was not his friend. They had a running battle going on forever. But this is Joe Forty out at the Mustang Ranch. And there's another sign that says, notice no more admittance to Iranian students until hostages are released. Joe Forty. But they had a major running battle. This is up at the... Uh, the Ponderosa, this is the, the, the put on a gunfight. But uh, <laughs> everybody recognizes him, right? <laughs> he thought he was born 100 years too late. He figured he would have made a great cowboy. So here he is with his pistols and everything. and. Uh, Huroy Marshall owns the pistols now.
you probably remember the opening to some of the uh, James Bond movies uh, where he shot through the, uh, the, the legs. Well, that's Don Don Darrell laying on his back there. And that's his idea. And he, he did that way before the, the uh, John Van, uh, the Bond movies, the Jim Bond, James Bond movies. And a shift there. I'm gonna show you a couple of two, three shots that he took when they put him in the Misfits. Of course, this is uh, Clark Gable and Marilyn Monroe. And again, uh, here's Sinatra and Monroe. Uh, this is a, a shot with all of the action going on when they filmed Five Against the House, the robbing of Harold's Club in 1955. That's a good movie. It uh, starred Brian Keith and uh, Montgomery Cliff and Kim Novak. Good stuff. The Prima Donna Girls. This is the Overland Hotel. See the new China Club down there? Just downtown shots. We had everything going. The Ladies Apparel, the Wonder Shop. You had Hilt Drug. You had the uh, Western... Uh, the Broilies, uh, the bottom. Let's see, I was trying to focus in on this and I'm not being able to read it. Photograph I could. This is the Carlisle stationery. It showed it on the other side. This is just downtown Reno. Buses are back with the same color scheme. The holiday, the sunset. And the bells just going through getting to the end of the program so we are courteous of our time and of course this is the last chance motel right out there uh, where they really improved it uh, right by the state line going west and i we always like this sign this is nevada state line and you just read what it is. And this was promoted in about 1935 when they were trying to get more people to move to Nevada, especially the wealthy people that could enhance some of the tax base. Uh, but no income tax, no sales tax, no inheritance, no corporation, no gift cap. So you had uh, the fellow that uh, founded Cord uh, Motor Cars and so on, people like that showed up. This is the Sky Ranch, the air. Uh, that was where they had the first uh, air races before they move over to Stead. And then here's part of the, the air races. We had hydroplane races out at Pyramid Lake. Nice shot of Pyramid Lake. And then something we all really, really need is a decent snowstorm. And that's it. Neil, that was great. I love that. I um, it was just great seeing the variety of photos that you you had, and also talking about kind of the evolution of several of those buildings. Um, so I do have a question. You had mentioned I got the off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, you mentioned what was the Lion Building that the Odd Fellows were in that became the professional building. Is that a building that's still here, or yes, did that no, get completely it, demolished? No, 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 no. It, it okay. only lost, they only lost the two upper floors. And, okay, and when I all showed right. you when I when I showed you where the Duncan Hines recommended by. That's the way the building looks right now. It, oh, it's okay. still there, three stories tall, and it's on the okay. uh, southeast corner of, of center and, oh, uh, okay. and second street. Okay. Okay. No, that was pretty that was pretty cool. I liked the oval window um, windows that you know that got demolished, you know, yep, from the exactly. fire, but I, I really liked that those windows. Uh, that was kind of interesting. All, all of the buildings had their own personality back there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, it, that's what's charming about so many of the buildings or how they've evolved over time. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Bob Broyley said Nevada Machinery and Electric. Yes. Later Broyleys. Broyleys, yeah. Okay. That's where I really ran into dry mouth there too, and I couldn't. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, j j uh, uh, a big hello to Bob Broyley. He's the, uh, the Broyley family was major friends and very close friends to the Cobb family. Nice. And, and Bob is one heck of a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have um, a question. Uh, oh, okay. There's a question. Does anyone know who designed the Lion slash professional building? And kind of, um, do you know how old the building is or um, that, you know, that got lost the top couple floors? Do you have an idea? I believe it was in the 19 uh, teens and 20s, early 20s. That I was, was kind of wondering that too with the, yeah. the design, but I, I just wasn't for sure. So, okay. But we'll have, yeah, we'll the official we'll name, yeah, the official name was the Lions Building, but everybody either called it the professional building because there were so many doctors, lawyers, and uh, the right. real business golly, you know, so on. But the, the main resident was the Odd Fellows Club itself. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know after the fire, did the Odd Fellows move to a yes, new over location? To, over, yeah, they went, went over to Sierra Street. Okay. All right. All right. Because I was like, well, they, I thought they were still <laughs> around. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a, another question. In the Idlewild pool photo, did Neil say he was in that picture? I thought that's a picture no, you're in, in there, there, but I couldn't. I there. wasn't sure. <laughs> well, which one? <laughs> I think you saw enough of me already, so I wasn't going to point myself up. But no, we, <laughs> we were able to put on that aquacade. They did them every year at a while, and then we did a special one with a, a, a one of our our friends, Ronnie Cox, was in a serious auto accident and he lost his arm, and we put on a benefit to get him a prosthesis, and so Don uh, Thompson and I, we were the two clowns that jumped out of the rafters to start the aquacade that that we did out there, but it was all the same same members of the, of the group that was there at Idlewild. Uh, oh, there was camaraderie that was established between the people. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so there's another question. Um, Neil, how long did your family own the photos, the modern photo? They started, and, yeah. Yeah, so I, it, uh, Lorraine was asking if you talked a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, we my folks came out here in '37, and they uh, lured out to see what it was all about by Merle Inch, and and Wally Warren, and they were uh, the two guys that had really kicked off uh, and were running uh, KOH at the time. And of course, my dad. Uh, you know, his whole life was radio. Well, they, they came out here and looked around and there was problems with the, with my dad being very successful uh, back east. And he had lots of ladies that um, they were around and he was, he was a, a big star. Ellie he was offered the People Are Funny show before Art Linkletter. He had, uh, if you look through the stuff we've got over at the Historical Society, bags of letters and st stuff, it just, it was something else. And they did all this crazy crap and got a lot of attention. But it was, it was really hard on the marriage. So they came out here and looked around and said, God, this place is great. And he turned around and went back, back to uh, Milwaukee and loaded up everything, cut the ties with all of his, his high paying gigs and he came out of to, to Reno. And that, so that was in uh, 38, I was born here in 39. Okay. And so away we went, but they were trying, he wasn't making the money we was making back East when he was a big shot. And he was doing side jobs and stuff for, uh, a, a, well, not uh, well, KOH and KOL uh, when they came on the air uh, with just strictly radio. 
uh, but they, he, they're taking pictures and stuff because he knew that sooner or later, the, the thing that was the coming uh, success would have been television. He saw it broadcast from room to room in 31 back at the Milwaukee Institute of Radio Engineering. So he took up photography and he got really good at it. And he taught my mom everything and they both were excellent photographers but he worked his way across the country with one of those pan cameras uh, where you take a big group shot and that, that oh. was the get that was the gas money and the rest of it to, to get out here and then of course he, he, he just wasn't making a, a whole lot so they went ahead and they were got into the taking photos and souping them because they ran their own dark room out of uh, Ridgeway Court. Uh, that was our house. Oh, okay. And uh, it evolved into uh, opening up a, a commercial facility. So they did that near about 1940. And uh, it lasted downtown until 52, moved out to California Avenue and South Virginia Street. And, uh, and then the marriage really went to hell in a handbag. And uh, that was the end of modern photo, and, and my dad just ran K and EV, and uh, mom mom was a portrait artist, and that's what she did to stay afloat. So, but that well, I was that's yeah. that's interesting because I um I really liked the the painting. You know, you can see it in the distance. You had mentioned well, you know you Reno Brown. Yeah. Um, did that was that sold? Did did oh yeah, that was, so, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was commissioned by her, by her. So, uh, okay, that's had, what I was wondering. You, you know, yeah. uh, well, in, in uh, one one of the the kids in um, uh, the uh, uh, Sunny uh, Jim's Jim, whatever his name of his morning program was back in Milwaukee was Lee Liberace. And when he came out here and he played in the Club Fortune, Modern Photo is just down the street a bit. And he says, God, there's Jerry Cobb. So they, uh, they wound up being friends. And he commissioned a portrait with he and his brother, George. And so I we, we got pictures up at the Historical Society where uh, Liberace and, and George are in, in the basement of 1260 Ridgeway Court. Uh, sitting for the flesh tones and getting the eye color and everything right. Uh, the painting that they, that George was in the background, it was focused on Lee's hands and, and, and his face and shoulders. And it hung above the mantle uh, down there in Southern California someplace. But, uh, you know, she, she was first class. It was, you looked at the stuff she did and they were, that, they were real. So. Wow. That's amazing. Um, oh, uh, there, um, Bob said, do you remember the time that Modern Photo had a, a jukebox service? Yes. And I know you've talked about yes. that you have a whole separate program on that. Yeah, I got a whole wanna... separate program on that. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, that was the Pacific Amusements. We found out, uh, Eric Moody looked that up. We always called it Telefono, but it was uh, where they had all of the operators above uh, there in the um, uh, the Eagle Building, the Eagle Hall, above oh, okay. Walgreens, mm -hmm. and uh, they had all of these records and stuff, and they uh, and a direct telephone line that went to the jukebox, and they would play. Uh, they put a nickel in, and they say, "I want to hear Tumbling Tumbleweeds" by the Sons of the Pioneers, and the gal that was manning that one particular turntable and that had these records all handy and they had hundreds of records instead of what wow. the uh, Wurlitzers and the rest of them had were just 12 uh, records, 24 selections. Well, you could get anything on it, but when they, after World War II, when the 45s came out and the Seabergs hit and you had a hundred records, 200 choices and a hot list, oh, everything, wow. that was the end of that. But he converted the whole damn thing into background music that he pumped into Dennis office and all the rest of it. And he, and he kept that going when we put K and EV on the air. And okay. uh, he used, yeah, that actually between having sponsorship by Sierra Pacific Power and, and Nevada Bell and, and the, um, uh, the funds that were coming in with the background music that he broadcast on a separate uh, a channel, 
uh, that kept uh, Kenny B from folding up and being nada. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty amazing that is pretty amazing i must say well my dad was a, <laughs> it was an electrical engineer and he was a a, 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 a radio and a personality big time but he was a horse trader too <laughs> well you'd have to and, and so well, it's yeah, fascinating you know, it's, the evolution of what all he accomplished to yeah, keep business yeah. going and but, but that was our version of a jukebox is a reamplification okay. of, of a piped in music coming from above the walgreens <laughs> wow yeah. all right there was a question from facebook um i didn't know we had a mitzpah same company as the place in tonopah you know the the different names that uh, came around on there. I think that was just a common. I think that was just a common I, name, and it was not a. I name. think so too. I think so oh. too. But, um, and let's see. Um, is there anything else um, you want to mention? It was a great talk, and you always just have great stories and little memories. And so I thought it was really a, a great yeah. program. Yeah. Um, I guess the one question I would have is, I know when you were doing the, you know, then and now series, you had talked that, what were you a teenager or whatever that you climb up on top of buildings sometime to take photos. So, well, you know. it, the, the fun story that goes with that is that Phil Earl came up to me one day and he shows me this picture and it's of these houses in the front. He says, you have any idea where that is? I says, well, yeah. I says, that's a third street uh, alongside of the railroad tracks, but the angle that it shot at, it doesn't show the tracks. You would get that exact angle if you were on the roof of the, of the El Cortez. And he says, well, how would you know that? I says, well, there wasn't a roof on the city of Reno that I wasn't on at one time or the other. And there was not a swimming pool or a music or a, uh, a movie house that I didn't know how to sneak into. It was, it was, you know, I guess I was a terrible kid, but, you know, I got, I, I, I got these, these uh, sites that I remember. And, and so you can pinpoint and then you, you can help identify stuff, especially the older, I can't identify anything new now, but yeah. Uh, well, but I think that's interesting, you know, because you, you know, earlier on you were exploring and looking at stuff and then, you know, family photos and, uh, and just the evolution, you've been able to identify locations and, and know a lot of history. So I just think that is just an interesting story we've talked well, about in the past. So <laughs> there's all kinds of fun stuff that, that happened. You've heard my story on the best fishings in Verdi and so yeah. on. And it just, but the biggest fish I ever caught in my life was on Washington Street when they went ahead and trained the reservoir so that they could clean out all of the junk. And so it, it was a German brown and it had to be damn near as, if, if you're holding it out in front of you, it was almost as big as I was. But that was, I got it in the gutter. <laughs> you know, was, it was going, all the water was going down Washington Street. <laughs> Wow. Well, <laughs> well, we have a couple comments. People have been saying thank you, Neil. It's it's a great presentation, and 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 everyone has been appreciating and enjoying the presentation. So, I want to say thank you, Neil, for being our guest speaker and, of course, our host. But um, <laughs> just thank you, everybody, for um, joining us today. And and it, as always, thanks to the Washoe County Libraries for helping us provide these programs and reaching out to the public. And, and so we just really appreciate this partnership and just want to wish everybody happy holidays. Yeah, this so is I'll an send excellent it back. partnership, it really is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and I wanted to just chime in. Thank you so much, everyone out there who joined us today and also Sherry and Neil um, with the Nevada Historical Society for um, making this event possible. So thank you again, everyone for being here and I really appreciate your time.